Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from bitemout.com and bitemoutlive.com and PL Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is Friday, ooh, August 6th, halfway through summer, and uh, the weather finally came back to us here. We had horrific rain all, a big chunk of this week, and uh, down in the upper 50s and kind of chilly. Now it's back in the 80s. Love it. Very happy. And uh, it was sort of a busy week last week. Some interesting things went on in the uh, auction world. A few good sales are coming up. We're still sort of in the doldrums of summer as far as auctions go. You'll notice there aren't a lot of them on there. Uh, uh, live auctioneers is pretty quiet other than the, the regular never-ending auctions of fakes and copies. Um, I've been, we, 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 we have been scouring live auctioneers to try to find something interesting and valuable and so forth. There isn't a heck of a lot going on. Uh, everybody's taking time off and uh, the same thing on eBay very quiet uh, but one thing I did notice last week somebody got a few people got some great buys on eBay and Catawiki and that's partly uh, I mentioned it last week that when, when the summer's on the sellers aren't around very much and a lot of buyers are taking time off a lot of buyers aren't taking time off they're not looking as hard as they normally do they've got you know they're with their families it's understandable but if you're sort of a predatory buyer and you want to really get out there and uh, do some serious looking, there are some buying opportunities. And there's a couple of things going on, things that went on in the last week I'm gonna, I want to go over quickly uh, that are coming up. There's a sale. This is in the carpet world um, over uh, in uh, Europe. This sale is going to take place just a few days. This is that Oriental rug sale at the Austrian auction company. They sell very interesting carpets and rugs and textiles, a lot of uh, Central Asian and uh, uh, Chinese rugs, Turkmen rugs, and so forth, Persian rugs. And one of the things that they have in here that's really, I love what they do, they sell fragments. And a lot of the fragments are from, are from um, very, very early Turkmen and very early Asian uh, carpets that uh, to buy one that's complete, to have a sample of it would cost a, a huge amount of money in many cases. And here they have collectors, avid collectors, uh, especially G uh, Germans and Austrians. They love to collect fragments. And um, uh, you can buy some very, very rare textile fragments uh, to, to study and learn from, like like these here, here. And you just look at them and say, well, they're cut off. Are they that interesting? Well, if you if you collect rugs and textiles, you know what I'm talking about. Having them and looking at them, being able to study them is a lot of fun, okay? If you're investing, um, in rugs, uh, rugs aren't a great investment, um, uh, as, as most art really isn't. Uh, most art is, is something you buy for its own pleasure. Antiques in general, uh, the industry averages is that they appreciate around four or five percent a year nowadays. Chinese art obviously went through a period where it was appreciating at 10, 20, 30, 40 percent there for a little while back in the 2006 to 2013 period. And now it's sort of leveled off. Prices have stabilized, which is good. It didn't collapse in the market the way the uh, Japanese market collapsed back in the 1990s, or the Korean market sort of collapsed after a period of extreme overheating. The Chinese market has sort of found its uh, maturation level, and uh, prices have gotten uh, much more sensible, much more stable, much more predictable. And, um, uh, uh, and there seems to now just be a flood of fakes hitting the market. Uh, but you're not seeing uh, increasingly, but you're not seeing um, the, the crazy leaps in prices from year to year of similar goods uh, like, like you did back then, which I think is healthy. I don't think I think it's very unhealthy when you have a when you have a, a tulip market, so to speak, going on with uh, any art form. And uh, th this is, anyway, back to the auction, the, the rug auction. He's got some terrific carpets and textiles in here. If you, if you, like, if you like Asian textiles, Central Asian textiles, Chinese textiles, uh, to mix with your Asian art interests, uh, this is a sale to check out and look into. And I got in touch with him uh, last week just to see, sort of get an idea how much it would cost to ship things. Uh, because that's always a concern with people. If you're not living in Europe, it's, it's a little different. But if you're living in the United States, you know, what's it going to cost to ship this thing? If I buy uh, one of these saddlebag covers, what's, what, what is the price going to be to get it from there to, uh, for example, to where I am in the Boston area? I'm just north of Boston, about an hour. And uh, I found he said it would be about 80 or 80 or 90 euros, which is completely reasonable completely reasonable. I guess they do their own shipping on the smaller stuff um, on, on, you know, maybe big rim size rugs. I'm not sure what that would be. 
but on smaller rugs it can be rolled up and put into tubes uh, the shipping rates are, are just fine they're, they're perfectly reasonable and there's a lot of material here to look at a lot of beautiful stuff too um, and things like this this beautiful if you if you want a really great Caucasian runner for your house this is something you want to look at with the beautiful yellow border and this uh, pole design down the center with diamonds on it uh, spectacularly well woven this is a really really pretty rug it looks like it's in great shape and it has a reasonable estimate of 2,500 to 3,500 euro. It's a, a, a Karaga, Karagashali and uh, a very attractive carpet, very desirable color palette. And then there's also a Ningxai, uh, a little cushion cover, uh, two to 300, two to 300 euro estimate. Um, a nice example, 19th century, well woven, uh, good condition, nice nappy, knotty pile on there. You can see the pile, some nice thickness in that. Uh, very attractive. Uh, and then you have this, you have a Putao rug. I like these. These are the pictorial rugs that are dominated by these blue borders. And uh, this one has a red-headed crane standing on a rocky outcropping um, uh, beneath a pine tree. Just a, a wonderful little rug. This is a scatter rug. It will look great. Um, either hanging on a wall as a tapestry or uh, in, in a nice spot in, in the corner of a room somewhere. Very, very nice. It's about, you know, Two, two, two feet by you know f four feet long. These aren't big. Uh, four to six hundred euro estimate. Um, uh, a nice looking carpet. And then uh, you know there's the Turkmen stuff we talked about and all that. So uh, you want to check that auction out. The Austrian Rug Company. If you're looking for something interesting, a little variation in your collecting, it's a it's a nice auction and they're very nice people. I was uh, happy to be in touch with them. Uh, and then on to this. This was that auction that was taking place here in Massachusetts last week. Willis Henry. Uh, I, I mentioned that I have, I've, I've known Willis for a long time, and uh, he's a very good auctioneer. And if some of you watched his auction, it was it was uh, 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 on live auctioneers last weekend. Um, you probably found it very enjoyable. They have an incredibly relaxed atmosphere. They sit back. <laughs> Um, he sits at a table. You can see some of the some of the bidders in the room. Um, one of the phone guys that was handling the phone bids was sitting right next to the camera, so you could hear him calling him up. There was a, a fellow working there that I know that used to work with us, named Pete Cacaludo, and he was also one of the auctioneers. And he was on the phone talking to people, and uh, he was discreet enough not to say who he was talking to, but you could hear the conversation how they were setting up to do the uh, the telephone bidding, and they had a number of things that did very well. This auction had all kinds of stuff in it. From, from regional New England estates, legitimate estate material. And the prices were pretty good. They had a big, a big area here of early Crocs. Early Americana is what Willis Henry's really known for. He knows the stuff cold. Um, they had the, these, these uh, old firkins and boxes and whatnot that are, are collected by the folk art collectors and so on. They had a very nice tavern table with button feet. It's early American, Queen Anne style, uh, brought $3,000 and so on. Um, some some very nice uh, maritime prints, 700, 500. One of the, one of this didn't sell. The hand color lithograph of New Bedford, which is a big whaling town, didn't sell for some reason. There was some nice early early nautical stuff, sextants and compasses and and naval officers epaulets with the boxes, this kind of thing. People that are into really into maritime art love this stuff. One of the things that was particularly interesting, and I thought it was a great buy, was Commodore Oliver Har Har Hazard Perry's gold ring with his intaglio seal. And this is part of the famous Perry family who were the explorers. Uh, solid gold ring with an intaglio. So if you're a historian, collector, big, big thing to buy. And then on to this was uh, something, this was a Civil War, uh, uh, revolutionary, not Civil War, Revolutionary War Journal. Uh, that was kept by Captain Benjamin um, uh, Be uh, Beale. And the Beals are a big New England family. And it was estimated at $1,500 to $2,500. Now, Will knew this was going to bring a lot more than that. But the point of the low estimate was to say there's no reserve on this stuff. We're not fooling around. We're here to sell it. And it ended up selling for $70,000 plus the buyer's premium, which was about 28%. So this thing ended up selling for a little over $90,000. did very well. It was fun to listen to the uh, selling of it. And uh, there's a lot of inf in interesting about the, I think it was the, the Fort Ty uh, uh, Ticonderoga, uh, all kinds of interesting military history in that diary. Hopefully a museum bought it. And uh, it was just an interesting sale all the way through. And I know this isn't Chinese stuff, but I love old auctions, old style auctions. I ran auctions for 20 years, 
and the fun of an auction um, uh, really came back watching Will and his people doing this auction. People were kibitzing with him, telling jokes. Um, he obviously had an audience there of people that he knew very well. Um, old friends, dealers that have been around for years, collectors that have been around for years, and they were kibitzing in between the bids, and 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 and, and, and you know, sort of a few inside jokes came up, and uh, it was quite entertaining to watch. And he does it sitting at a desk; he's not standing and screaming at the audience. He does it sitting at a long table. It's very relaxed, and uh, it was fun to watch. And uh, one of the things that was was a great bargain in this sale, to illustrate that they they. Uh, 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 don't don't push for hard reserves. Was this painting, and I mentioned it last week. It was the Clam Diggers by um, Philip Little um, of Salem, Old Salem, Massachusetts. It's about a hundred year old painting, um, and Marblehead in the background. And it was estimated two to three thousand dollars, which I thought was pretty reasonable. And somebody picked this painting up on a single bid of seven hundred and fifty dollars. That's the kind of thing that can happen during a summer auction. Uh, the buyers, people are away, not paying attention, um, and and I think I think this was like one of the buys of the week. He he dropped the opening bid. The opening bid on it, I think, was a thousand. He dropped it to seven fifty. See if anybody would take a bite at it. Somebody, one person bid, and that was the only person. And uh, you can see here, starting bid was a thousand. He cut the bid to get some interest. He got it, and that was it. So somebody got an absolutely great painting for for seven hundred fifty dollars. That's an absolutely great thing. And uh, that's the uh, that's the uh, the Revolutionary War uh, uh, book, and uh, that's the painting. And oh, the, the, and here we are. This was the uh, Celadon uh, uh, Guangxu period Kong vase that he had that we talked about. This is sort of what got me interested in the sale originally, and I brought it up last week. Um, it was estimated very modestly at eight to twelve hundred dollars. I called Will and spoke with him about it. He went over the vase with me. Had one minor nick out of the shoulder. And uh, he, he was sort of curious as to what we thought it would bring, and I told him it would bring you know at least fifteen to twenty-two thousand dollars, maybe more, and it ended up selling for twenty-four thousand plus the premium. Uh, it did very well. The color was nice. It's, a, it's an authentic piece. Came from a, a good Salem family with a long history of, 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 of in the area. They were involved in China. Had everything you wanted in, in, a, in a nice vase, including very good impeccable provenance, which is a big, I think had a strong impact on the price. It's not a face that had been through 10 different auctions in the last 10 years. All right, and that did very well, as did the uh, silk. There was a nice piece of silk uh, from the same house, uh, a very, very pretty example on, on, on cobalt blue ground with uh, beautiful silver needle, silver gilt thread, silver uh, thread needlework on it. Um, here it is. and. Uh, just a wonderful thing. Beautiful piece of Chinese silk all the way around and in absolutely great condition. Uh, uh, some, a little bit of discoloration here, but boy, the rest of it is just great. And this might have been something that, that it was under or something that was on it, I'm not sure. But it's an absolutely great piece of silk. It ended up selling for 2,500 plus the premium, so you're looking at around uh, uh, 2500, about $3,300, something like that, $3,200. And then over here on uh, Katowicki last week, uh, this, was, this was a great buy if you were a Japanese collector. This is a pair of clobbered uh, early 18th century or late 17th century Japanese Arita um, ewers. And they were listed on Katowicki as being Chinese. And um, so what I think might have happened is that the Chinese collectors looked at it and said, well, I don't think the Chinese and the Japanese collectors didn't even look at them because they didn't say Japanese. And it's hard to tell. These are very hard to tell if they're Japanese or Chinese because so much of the uh, decoration is overpainted with, um, uh, when, when they got to Europe with all, the, all these enameling. And that's what clobberware is. It's, it's things that were done. This, these two cruets, these two ewers were originally just in cobalt blue. And when they arrived in Europe, um, uh, decorators in Europe would um, add the colors to them to make them uh, add some Amari palette colors to them. And uh, all you need to do is if you look at the way the figures are drawn and the shape of the pot with those big handles and, and this spout, this form spout, you know right away it's Japanese. Very Japanese in taste. It was a pair of them. And somebody got them both for 341 euros. They were unreserved. We've been including as much as we possibly can, unreserved stuff in the uh, Katowicki listings. 
as I've said before, um, I think some of the guys wanting reserves are, 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 have gotten a little bit out over their skis as to what things are worth and, and, and willing to take shots. If they can sell it, fine. If not, they don't want to sell it. And that's no fun for the bidder. You, you go to an auction, you bid at an auction, um, you, you're there to sell the stuff. And uh, I, can, I, I know from my own experience of, of running auctions, uh, we rarely accepted reserves. And we sold items um, uh, way into six figures. And uh, um, we, we never had reserves on any of those items. Um, we, would, we would just simply do our job and advertise them. We had a good reputation for playing it straight. And um, people came, and the, and the, piece, the prices got to where they belonged. Uh, and uh, I think that this reserve business that's going on where uh, the sellers are allowed to pick their own reserves, are, uh, it, it makes them, it's a mistake. It's a mistake. I, 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 I think it's just a really dumb idea. All right, and then on to this. Uh, this, this is a lot of three uh, uh, Kung Shi period uh, uh, Mari uh, teapots. Now, all three of these had some type of restoration to them, uh, but so what? Uh, these were very attractive, nice forms, unusual forms. Uh, this melon form at the bottom here in particular, and this sort of almost like a chocolate pot up here with this little spout, very nicely done, really, really charming. This is a for sort of regular form. This is a more classical Chinese Amari pot, but this little melon form one I thought was quite charming, and, uh, and this, this taller version here. Somebody bought all three, all right? for 203 euros. That was a good buy. That was a good buy. They'll display beautifully. I don't know what level of restoration they had, but it, 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 but for, you know, uh, what, 65, 70 euros a piece plus shipping, uh, that's a heck of a good deal. And, and you got three unusual types to add to your collection as far as forms go. And if you're not, you know, if you're working with unlimited budget, yeah, great, spend, you know, six to $800 on each one of them if they're perfect. All right, so you're spending um, you know two or three thousand instead of two hundred. So for but for ten cents, fifteen cents on the dollar, you're getting a great buy. And if you if you you're collecting for the pleasure of owning interesting objects and you're dealing with a budget, this is a smart thing to do. Smart thing to do. And uh, then there was this this Naishong Shen period, heavily enameled, very deep enameling on this plate. Um, with lotus uh, lotus blossoms and uh, an ascending duck or, or, or bird of some kind. I think it's a duck. And uh, all these little fruit forms around the edge. It's a very pretty little plate. It looked like it needed a cleaning, but um, otherwise it looked pretty good. The uh, details look nice. The enamels were nice and translucent. Uh, you can see the outline area is very nicely done in, in mix either in gray or they were done in, in, the, in, in this uh, rose color, which I think is very attractive when they do it that way. And uh, again, you have this nice, uh, strong yellow enameling uh, that you like to see on these. And lot, the seller did a very good job providing photographs. Lots of nice detail. And there's the back of the plate, very classical 18th century back. And uh, somebody got a pretty good buy. They picked this up for 250 euros. Beautifully done, Yongshan period, probably done in the latter part of the period, probably you know 1730 to 1735. But nicely, nicely done. Made for the export market, of course. And then this, the pair of Kangxi. Uh, this is a nice pair of plates. These are Kangxi period uh, 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 with these beautiful uh, birds and uh, nice use of iron red, that sort of Wukai coloring. Uh, very attractive. I love the lappet borders and all that. And somebody bought them both. They got the pair for 356 euros. And it didn't mention, as I recall, um, uh, any damage or anything like that. Fine condition. Okay, they've been restored. These are the ones that were, okay, these were restored. But still, 350 euros for the pair. And depending on the amount of restoration, um, it's a great deal. Uh, uh, these in perfect condition, single, uh, single one would typically sell for, oh, you know, 650 to 900 bucks, somewhere in there. Uh, so that was that was a good buy for someone, and then you had this, the little Kangxi teapot. Um, uh, we, we, I think we featured this on the newsletter page last week because I I've always liked this particular form. It's always seemed somewhat elegant, and I like the way the panels are divided, and then the light decoration, uh, somewhat simple, and this very attractive lid with this with this ribbed uh, little finial on top, and. Uh, 
somebody picked this up for 320 euros. A little bit overestimate, but I think it's a nice little teapot. I think the estimate was just, you know, very, very reasonable to get you interested. And I think that was a good buy. Really do. And then heading over to uh, things that went on on eBay last week, uh, you had th things like this Nunya Straits uh, hot food pot. These things are so popular. Um, and I've said it many times, many, many years ago, these were around in antique shops. And you can pick up these, these uh, knowing your straights pieces, straights, or no, it's just straights pottery, straights porcelain. They were like the least expensive porcelain you could buy. If it was Chinese and from the Qing Dynasty or the early Republic period. And, uh, you know, a pot like this would be 50, 60, 75 dollars, not that long ago. Uh, and uh, there was a, uh, I've said it before, there was a dealer in this area, uh, a, a, a woman, Amelia Porter. And she wrote books on Chinese export porcelain. She was very active with the PBD Essex Museum. Classic old school dealer. She got sold out of her house. She had a big federal, uh, a colonial house, federal, uh, was a little earlier than federal, colonial style house in, in Beverly, Massachusetts, near the ocean. And you go to her house, and the whole first floor of the house was a shop. And it was just, she got house calls everywhere. And there was just stuff piled to the ceilings. And then on the second floor was all the export porcelain that she really, really loved. The chi early, fine rose mandarin, rose medallion, the early stuff, um, early export wares, 18th century export wares. All that was on the second floor, she and her husband. But on the first floor, they just had an amazing amount of other types of Chinese pottery and porcelain. And she didn't know a lot about it. She would just get the house call to go out to these sort of wealthy areas out here near Boston, and in what's known as the Gold Coast, uh, Manchester by the Sea, Beverly Farms. Pride's Crossing, Hamilton, Wenham, all the all the watering holes for the for the for the rich since the uh, 1800s, and um, when they're cleaning out a house, they'd call her. She just became the person you called, and she would go and take it all. And uh, this kind of thing would be piled up on the first floor like shelves of it, and uh, you could just go in and buy all you wanted. And she was fine with selling it, and she was a good negotiator. She was a very very nice uh, lady, and she and her husband they were uh, they were absolutely lovely any rate, uh, what did it do? This one did pretty well. It ended up selling for $809. And some of these bring more. Um, uh, some of them bring 1500 and 1800 and so forth. This one brought uh, $809. So I think it was a pretty good buy for, for Nunya Strait's uh, uh, work. All right, and then over to this, that wonderful rank badge. This was a terrific rank badge with an overall cr uh, cloud pattern. Uh, very striking, very graphic, very visual, uh, the way this was done. Uh, it's a nice 19th century example. Uh, looked to be in good shape, and uh, a lot of people like this. Ended up selling for $1,645, all right, which shows that the, the silk market is still moving along just fine. And uh, this was a very nice uh, example, but was uh, 19th century, not, not an early 20th century one. All right, and then the tobacco leaf plate. Uh, we looked at this last week. It had a little bit of wear. We discussed here and here, and uh, these typically bring you know you know 700 or 1,000 if they're in great great shape, but a little bit of wear. I think held back the price somewhat because uh, it's a very desirable shape with this this form of shaped rim and so forth. And the enamels uh, otherwise were the good, were nice colors, very strongly, very richly decorated uh, all through here. Nice big leaves. So for the back of it looked like the, the way they all do. This is a normal firing line in the glaze. That's not a that's not a damage or something like that. That just happens when they were being when it was being cooked in the kiln. Um, is a, a close up of it. It shows a very very faint line up in here and so forth. But uh, and a little bit of fritting, which is normal, all the way around that kind of thing. Typical on the edges of these old plates. Uh, sold for five hundred and seventy one dollars. So it went a little bit on the soft side. Partly because of maybe the enamel, uh, a little bit of enamel wear, but also time of the year, summer. Um, uh, and this was being sold by a dealer in Bristol in the U UK. And uh, I, you know, a lot of vacationing um, over there can easily push the prices down by 20 or so percent. And then the double carp mandarin dishes. This, this caught my eye for one reason. My own mother had this pattern. Um, she had a service. And uh, she had the same exact plate. Uh, she, had a, she, had, she had a Mandarin tea service like this. And uh, the exact same pattern, I grew up with it. She had, she had two of these, 18, or she had one of these and she had an 18th century set that was done in this pattern with kids with firecrackers and stuff. It was a tea service that she bought in Boston back in the, in the 1950s for $12. And uh, full tea service, including the teapot. <laughs> it's how cheap this stuff used to be. Uh, uh, 
uh, there was a very good antique shop near Beacon Hill, and she went in um, right before Christmas one year, and the guy was unpacking the uh, boxes, and she asked him how much the tea set was, and he said 12 bucks, and she said fine, and uh, she, she had my dad pick it up on his way home from the office one day, and that was it. And, uh, and that set, we, we, we sold it years later. It, we brought thousands of dollars. But at any rate, um, this, this was another pattern that she liked. And I had it on a bookcase in, in one of the dens in the house. And uh, uh, it ended up selling okay. It did $163. Not extremely rare, but very attractive, very pretty. And I like the twin fish um, uh, uh, pattern on the border. And uh, over here to this, the, uh, the Yen Yen style vase. Uh, this was a late 19th century vase, and I think the coloring and the design of it might have scared a few people away. Uh, because this, this style of vase has been copied heavily. Uh, and a lot of people, I suspect, looked at it and said, oh, it's one of those copies. And uh, if they didn't bother to look at the foot, uh, I can see why they think that. And I thought sort of the pos same possibility when I first saw it, before I put it in the newsletter last week, then I flipped it over and saw that. And that is a good looking, all that iron oxide around here, that worn foot, um, legitimate dirt and grunge, oh, it looks, it looks fine all the way around. And uh, it has a chin lung marker, of course, it isn't chin lung at all. Um, uh, and it's funny because it's done like a, more in the, in the idea of a Kangxi vase, but they threw a chin lung mark on it. And uh, it's, you know, it is a, a late 19th century example. And somebody picked this up pretty reasonably for $835. I think that was a good buy. Uh, I think maybe in October, November, this probably would have maybe brought 11 to 1200. Uh, but again, some, a summer sale from a seller in the UK. And then over here to another annoying Straits, uh, Phoenix Plate. Now, just a few weeks ago, we saw a couple of these go through here. Very similar. This is a well-known pattern. And they all brought 750 to about $900. All right. And uh, this one sold uh, this week from another seller in the UK, $529. All right. That, that, to me, that tells you something about about the the options. Uh, I figure it went for about a third less than it should have. All right, but anyway, that's that's again the summer, the summer mode uh, uh, auction buying uh, possibilities. And then under this, I love this. I like wood. All of you know I like wood carving. Uh, I'm not sure this is agar wood, but boy, it's a wonderful root carving of of, a, of an old man and uh, on a beautiful base. I just like it. It's just got a great feel to it. I think these, these fabulous old carvings are so undervalued in the market. Just crazy. Um, um, just absolutely great. I, uh, I bought my wife one of these. I bought her a big one that was uh, about three or four feet tall from um, my friend Lee Tino at an auction uh, down in New York a few weeks ago, a few months ago now. And he had one, and uh, we, we added a room into our house uh, on the top floor of our house. My wife had a studio and things, and it's sort of a big room that um, uh, looks out on the water. It's pretty great. And uh, she likes these kind of things. She has Italian carvings, and she has 17th century Italian beggars that are almost like the size of a child and uh, that came down through her family. And I got her this wonderful root carving from Lee Kino's last sale. You can go look at it. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's probably still online. And uh, uh, Lee got it right up to me, uh, a terrific guy, and I gave it to her for her birthday. And we have a number of these carvings around our house, and I just, I think they're just terrific. And they're such a bargain, relatively speaking. This went for just $114. That is a great buy, all right? Uh, and it's because, it's because they're not appreciated yet. Someday these will be. These will be appreciated the way scholars' objects are appreciated. Uh, because for a long time, scholars' objects weren't worth anything. Uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't until the last 30 or 40 years that people paid serious money for scholars' objects, other than the, uh, the famous Kangxi um, uh, peach bloom uh, uh, porcelain pieces, the, 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 the seven forms. But typically, scholars' objects were not uh, the, the, the object of great hunting and, and, and chasing. Bamboo brush pots are still relative bargains uh, today. Uh, you can buy a, a really great brush pot um, uh, in wood. Uh, for fairly modest amounts of money these days, you know, under ten thousand dollars, and uh, it's just because they're not appreciated. And I think the same is true for these. If you're looking for an area to collect early wood carvings from China, I think is a fantastic category, and there's very little written about them, so it's worth checking out. All right, now over here to this this nice uh, 18th century export bowl profusely decorated. This thing was decorated heavily inside and out. Look at the interior. It's just so wonderful. And you see the same pattern, um, uh, just like it's appearing here on plates sometimes. 
But this is a beautiful example, lots of gilt, looks to be in nice shape. This was about an eight or a 10 inch bowl, as I recall. But notice the gilding is all very nicely, uh, still intact. It looks like it's in great shape. Oh, there's the ruler, how wide is it? Uh, it's about seven inches in diameter. Okay, it's a smallish bowl, but a, but a, but a, but a nice example. Not nice example, lots of detail. And somebody picked it up for $37. And this was a seller in, uh, this was, um, what is it? Uh, Quint, Qui Atlanta. I always get that wrong. It's a, it's a dealer down in Atlanta, Georgia. Had this, 300 bucks, that was a good buy. All right, and then this, this the silver box. Um, now I got an email from somebody about this box. And, I, and, I, and if, if uh, um, this, this, I had mentioned last week that this box looked an awful lot like a box that we had seen get sold on here um, uh, last, uh, about eight months ago. And I got an email from somebody who said it was the same one and there was a problem with getting the thing sent to them. And they ended up, eBay ended up intervening in PayPal and giving the woman her monies back. And um, by the time I figured this all out, I think this had already sold. But at any rate, uh, if you have trouble with this box, let eBay know that the seller had done this before. But they, the, according to the person that reached out to me, this was not the seller account. It was sold under another account name. And the, this is a newer account, only 12 feedback. So something funny going on here. I don't know what it is, and I and I sort of I sort of feel badly about putting it in the newsletter, and having it having it gone through before we were able to figure out really what was going on um, uh, with it. All right, so uh, keep that in mind. I mean, PayPal and eBay took care of it, and it was fine in the end. But but um, I think as somebody that was fishing um, to get the best possible price they could, and I think the last time I went through it, it went for about six or seven thousand. This time it went for forty five hundred. So um, if you if you bought it, uh, I hope you get it. Otherwise, uh, immediately contact eBay and let them know that the same box was sold by a seller under a different name, also from Florida, and it's probably the same person. All right, it's so annoying, I can't believe it. At any rate, it's too bad, it's just a nice box, and it's a sad thing. And, and then on to this, that wonderful tur tortoise shell fan uh, that we had talked about last week, because tortoise shell fans are a lot rarer than ivory fans. Uh, for every t 20 ivory fans, you see one tortoise shell fan, if that many. And um, uh, these are rarer than, obviously, than the silver fans, which are rarer than the paper and lacquer fans, uh, but this, uh, or, the, or the ivory fans. Anyway, this was a very, very nice one. I liked the way it was done. I liked the, the details of the blades, very nicely carved, very well reticulated all, uh, all throughout. And it looked to be in quite good shape overall, all together, just a nice condition. It, uh, the ribbon might have been restrung, but that doesn't matter. They often are because they rot out. And there's a, there was a small line here, which the seller very uh, uh, honestly pointed out, but it looked to be not impacting the structure of the frame at all. And somebody uh, paid $1,894 for it, all right, which is about $700 more than people typically pay for a good ivory fan. So that shows you the, 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 the difference in value. Uh, the shipping of uh, tortoise shell, of course, and the shipping of ivory is a little dicey these days, so you want to be careful. Uh, because of international laws and CITES permits and, and Endangered Species Acts and all that business. Um, but um, this is obviously a, an early 19th century fan and beautifully done. Beautifully done. And then over here, there are a few things that are just coming up this week that will be in the newsletter. Uh, let's see here. This is a, a, a rather nice big vase that's closing later today. If you like these big, big Familiar Rose crackle ground vases, this is a dandy one. I don't know why it hasn't getting more interest. Uh, Joni's in Canada has it. And uh, it's a nice big example, well decorated. And it's only up to $102 and it ends in seven hours. It ends at 9.36 tonight. All right. Uh, and I think there's another one that's sort of in the same price range right now. So, um, uh, and, and, and how big was this thing? This thing was pretty big. I hate how Joni's does this. She puts her measurements way down here, 23 inches tall. Yeah, this is a big boy. Um, you know, it should bring 13, 1400, 1500 bucks anyway. But uh, right now it's way under the money. All right, and then also there's, I mentioned, speaking of ivory fans, there's a monogrammed ivory fan coming up this week in this week's newsletter. Here it is. It's a nice example. It's, it's got a break on the primary blade, though, unfortunately. But nice carving work, a, a good-looking example. Otherwise, um, I don't. you might want to ask the seller if they have that piece. And uh, so far, it's, it's, it closes on Sunday, but the bidding is very slow because of that, that loss. 
but the detail here is absolutely excellent. Um, if, if I owned this, I would probably get it framed in a way that you didn't weren't staring at that break all the time and you could enjoy the, uh, the visual quality of this because it's, a, it's actually a wonderfully, wonderfully carved uh, fan. And then this vase. Now I had a, a couple of inquiries. I had, I had one inquiry on this vase and then about two hours later I got another inquiry this week through the identification uh, uh, service on the site. And uh, oh, those of you that have been getting them, I thank you for your positive feedback on us doing them in video form. Uh, uh, this was something that we, we had to do because of the, the issue of my hand and for the time being. And uh, just so you know, I, I went to the doctor yesterday again and uh, 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 he's saying uh, six to 10 months more of um, uh, recuperation uh, to get full use back. And there is a possibility of another surgery looming. Um, but that he said five or six months out. He said, don't worry about it too much right now. He said, we can do that any time uh, to, to get some um, use of the, the tips of the fingers. At any rate, it's, it's not fun. Uh, at any rate, uh, we've been doing the, re the replies to the inquiries on the identification assistance service with little short videos ranging from two and a half to uh, a few minutes long. And uh, we had several on this vase this week. We had one, and then right after it, we got another one and another one. And I, I think the price is getting up there. Um, uh, th th this is not, in my opinion, an early 19th century vase. Word early 19th century, this price would make sense. But I don't think it is. I think this is a later 19th century vase, judging by the foot rim and uh, the details. Um, there's, the, there's the bottom of it. Uh, there's the foot. And that, that, that sort of uh, slightly, uh, not sandy, but not glass smooth, uh, unglazed paste, no iron oxide line. And it has a, uh, a rain mark stamped into the bottom, which I think is maybe, maybe causing a few people to uh, think it's authentic. There's a chin lung mark stamped into it. That chin lung mark is done wrong, obviously wrong, and it is not a chin lung vase. And I think that may be pushing some of the pricing on this. There may be a couple of people on there that uh, think that it's actually a chin lung example. Uh, let's see here. What's the bid history? Uh, bidder 1565, 1565, 64. And you have a zero, uh, and you have a zero feedback bidder that's just joined in, um, uh, which is not good. Um, zero feedback bidders are, if you're the seller of this, I would get rid of him. <laughs> Uh, because it means he's may have just opened an account after having another account shut down for, for fooling around and he just came back with a new account. Uh, I'd be very leery of a zero, zero feedback bidder in the closing moments of an auction. Uh, uh, but at any rate, uh, I think it's a 19th century vase and I think it's a late 19th century vase and I think it's reached all the money that it's worth at this point. Uh, I, th I, I think I believe, I told people, I, I felt it was a 14 to you know, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen hundred dollar vase somewhere in there, not three thirty three hundred. I think thirty three hundred is is high for that. But it would be a steal if you have people thinking it's Chin Lung period. All right, and now over to this uh, Hans thirty nine sixty two. I haven't seen anything from this seller now for a while. He's been taking. He's he's over in uh, in um, the Netherlands. His, his, his name is Feek. He's a good dealer. Uh, he gets nice things. He, I think he's been on a bit of a hiatus. And uh, he's got this very nice uh, 18th century, probably Yong Chen period vase. Nice little piece. He, this guy knows what he's doing. Uh, here's a picture of the bottom of it. That's what it should look like. Nicely done, very carefully trimmed. It's got that flattened inverted disc foot, slightly concave. Uh, good looking enamel. So you can, he, he knows how to shoot a picture too. You notice how he allowed the glare to bounce off the glaze a little bit here. That is intentional. He wants you to be able to see how the enamels react to the light and so forth. And here, this, this uh, uh, very, very nice uh, persimmon or pomegranate on here. And um, just fine. And uh, so far, it's up to $123. It closes on Monday. And I expect it'll probably end up selling for eight to 1200 or somewhere in there. Um, it has a, um, a hairline. And originally, it had been drilled. Well, maybe that might slow it down a little. It's got a filled drill hole in the bottom. Didn't notice that before. Okay, but still, very pretty example. Classical Yongchen shape. That's a shape that was very popular in the Yongchen period. 
and uh, nice looking thing. And he also has up this, this very attractive classical uh, uh, early 18th century Amari uh, plate. It's not a charger, it's a plate. It's about eight inches in diameter, as I recall. And uh, that, 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 should, uh, that would be a great buy for, uh, you know, $200 or $300. And then lastly is this. I threw this in, getting back to wood carvings again. I like this thing a lot. And it looks like a small carving. According to the seller, this thing is 18 inches tall. It's nicely done. It's 19th century from what I can see. Uh, the details are good. The, the piece hasn't cracked too much up the middle. It looks, still looks okay. Uh, nice facial expression on it. Nicely done hands. The robes are well done. Um, here's a picture of the bottom. Obviously, it was you know they, they used to paint them red and put them on these stands red lacquer some gilding and so forth and this thing is dandy and um let me see where is this in california the shipping to here is 35 bucks for it and it weighs uh what does it weigh it weighs f weighs about five pounds 18 inches tall i love that that would be a great thing to put in a hallway wouldn't it 18 inches tall nice size or on the end of a table or someplace very attractive it's got one bid at 50 bucks closes next friday and uh if you if you like nice carvings that's a charming one that's a very charming one. It would, it would go great with your porcelain. All right. And that's about it for the week. Um, other than that, there's not a heck of a lot going on. Like I said at the beginning, it's been sort of a quiet spell here. It's August. Um, you know, everybody in France and England, they're all on vacation. They've all gone camping in the, in the, you know, up in the mountains and down to the ocean and enjoying this summer. And, and after the last year that everybody's had, I don't blame them. Uh, get out of the house. Go do stuff with your family. Take advantage of it. And uh, we've been having a great time. We had uh, uh, two of my grandchildren have been staying with us every, almost every other weekend, going to the beach at the house and uh, having fun camping out and, you know, on air mattresses and running around doing things with the neighborhood kids. And it's just been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun. And um, I hope you're all doing well. And uh, uh, we're going to work on some things that we're working on. We'll get into it next week. Some new things we're going to try out. Um, and... Um, that's about it. We're also renovating the offices here. We're expanding. We've got trucks coming, taking stuff away, storage, and it's, it's gotten a little out of hand in the last 20 years. We've got too much stuff here. All right. Have a, have a wonderful uh, weekend, and we'll see you all next week. And sorry this went on a little bit long. <laughs> all right. Bye-bye.